So we're going to be in 3D Studio Max and Blender for this one. I want to talk about grouping and instancing and how it relates between the two softwares anyways. And for some of the guys that watch the channel, no, I'm not sponsored by Autodesk. I don't do affiliate marketing, none of that nonsense. Uh, I just have the trial for 30 days, so I figured I'd do a couple videos on it and uh, talk about the software anyways. But let's just jump into this and let's do a, um, a box real quick. And we'll do a cylinder two while we're at it. So we're creating some kind of game object or something perhaps, and uh, we need to keep these things together. We can group them together, basically. It's real simple and straightforward. You select the, uh, the two different objects, click group, and then uh, just group them basically. You just call it your new asset or whatever. Okay, and then that's that. So they're now grouped and it's that easy. Now in Blender, you don't really have groups, okay? Instead, you have to use collections, and then it mixes into collection instances. It gets kind of squirrely, but it's actually more powerful if you go through that process and set it all up and plan to use it in a very specific way, but it's very quirky and uh, can cause you a lot of problems potentially. But uh, this one's very simple and straightforward. We create a group. If I hold shift and drag, we can duplicate, um, or you can just hit, uh, what is it? Like control V, I guess, to clone it. And when we duplicate, let's kind of go over that menu real quick. Uh, we have some options here, copy, instance, and reference. Now, Blender, most of you know that if you hit Shift D, you duplicate, it creates a copy, right? So that's what that is right there. Um, instancing is an exact match between the two here. And then reference is going to be similar to Blender's behavior where you're doing a link duplicate, which is Alt D, right? So let's just go over the instance first. And so if we instance these together, and you can see right now, there's no modifier on it. But if I was to add a modifier to one of these, like say an edit poly modifier, you can go ahead and do that. Go into edge, select this edge, and chamfer it. Uh, we'll see that it updates on both models and click apply. And so this edit poly is shared between all the different objects here basically and uh, so we can modify both meshes at the same time this can get a little squirrely sometimes in 3d studio so you want to be careful of that one working um, on meshes after their group perhaps uh, but it is possible and so it doesn't matter which one we select here if we work on it it's going to just continue to be modified basically right now what's different is when we create the reference it's like a link duplicate in blender Okay, and what we see here is that um, if we modify this one or this one, this one will update because it's um, looking for the information from these two, basically, right? Now, but that doesn't mean this one can't be unique. So if we want to try something else a little bit different on this and we add another edit poly, for example, um, we'll get another edit poly. So this will have one. This will have two edit polys now. Um, and we can go in here and start working on it if we wanted to. Now, for whatever reason, every software has its quirks. Just kind of take note. All the modeling tools up here disable for some reason. That's just something, uh, maybe an oversight by Autodesk, but whatever the case, maybe it just can't function. Who knows? But the thing is that we can still add an edit poly, modify it, and we'll get this kind of result here. And this is kind of interesting because now when we go back to the original, this was that one below it, right? So that one still takes effect before what we changed so we can actually modify the meshes like so and just continue updating them both at the same time and it holds that chamfer still on it but once again this can get a little bit squirrely so you definitely oh i want to select the edges here so shift click edge boom now we can do a chamfer there we go shift click chamfer as well there you go, and it'll update like so. All right, so that's how that works in 3D Studio. Now let's go over to Blender and play around with this idea over there, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Let's just create a cylinder, rotate it out, and we'll do that. Now, if we want to create a group, we can't. Now, some guys are they're going through this process where they create a empty plane axis I'm going to change the size up and they'll take all of this and parent it to this control P and then parent object keep transform slams it all into a uh, an empty basically here. And so people are treating this like a group so that way you can select the empty and just move it around. Uh, this it's kind of how you would do things in unity 
And so a lot of people do utilize this one. It's even the grouping feature inside of machine tools add on is basically um, what's going on here. So you can see if we select two with machine tools, we can group with control G and it creates an empty and it sets it up like so. It's just a cube empty. So that's great, but we can do things a little bit differently here as well. So you could think of this collection and we'll just create a new collection for the heck of it. But we take all the objects, we select them, press M, new collection, and we'll call this our asset now, right? And so all these other collections we'll get rid of real quick. All right, this is kind of a group by itself. So the way this works out is that if we were to just go ahead and press Shift A, we can create collection instance asset, okay? Now, this here is all together, and we can use it like such, right? But we don't have a modifier panel no more. And we can't do like we can't go into edit mode with this anymore. Okay, so there's not much else we can do on this one now as it is. And if we were to try to do something like select these here and just try like Alt D and move them out, we will create a link duplicate. So if we modify one of these, it modifies the other, right? Which is nice. But once again, this is going to be two new assets here that we would have to move to a new collection. And this is where it gets kind of weird because you got to go back and forth. It gets a little squirrely, right? Not, not the behavior we want necessarily. Uh, so how do we kind of get around this uh, limitation of the, of the setup here? Well, what we can do is we can actually just create, in our case, let's just do a cube. Okay. And we can start to rely on geometry nodes. So we go to geometry nodes, click new here. And so our cube input is right here. We're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to input this to be our object. So how do we do that, right? Well, shift A, create input, scene, collection info, okay? And so collection info, and that's just one way of creating that. Or we can grab the collection, drag it down here, and do this, okay? So just keep that in mind. Collection info, and we reference our asset collection, okay? If we plug this into here, it becomes an exact copy of it. And we'll see that we now have a modifier list as well that we can utilize. But if we try to add a modifier, like let's say simple deform, we'll set taper on Z. And we try to modify it with this uh, taper, nothing's going to happen. Okay. And so we have to go back to our geometry node and we have to do realize instances, place it in here, and now it actually takes effect. Okay. So this doesn't seem like it's um, all that useful, really. Uh, well, this is going to seem useful to a lot of you guys, but we can't go like into um, edit mode and do anything with this, right? Like it's just kind of frozen here and it's stuck. Nothing else we can do. So this add-on that I'm using, the modifier list add-on, I already made a video about this, but you can use an edit mesh modifier. You would actually be able to go back into edit mode and edit this mesh. Um, in Blender's version uh, 4.2 and higher, I believe, or something like that. But I'm on 3.6 right now, so that's not here. All right, so now we're in 4.3 with the modifier list add-on as well. Let's go to uh, this instance here that was set up on the cube, right? The geo nodes and all that. And you'll see the modifier list add-on has an edit mesh modifier. Once you add that, it's like a free state. You can go into edit mode. You just continue working on this uh, potentially. but you can't kind of go up and down in the stack anymore. It's just like a lock mechanism almost. I literally think it's created a duplicate behind the scenes, but uh, nonetheless, it's still useful perhaps if you wanted to try to um, maybe utilize that. But for the most part, this is how it's going to work out. And you're just going to more than likely set up some kind of geometry node set up like this. Real simple, right? Um, but later on, you can plug this in to any kind of geometry node setup you want later on, where you're doing like arrays on uh, circles or distributed on points or whatever the case, there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do. Um, so yeah, if you wanna play around with this and try to get the hang of it, it can be quite useful to um, explore the idea of using collection instances, basically. That's more or less your um, instance groups, if you would, or reference groups because that's technically what we're doing. It's more like a reference right now, right? So anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Check you out the next one. All right, take care.